Hi there guys, this is Simon from IV Audio, and this video is a follow-up for a previous video that I made on creating an auto-updating label in Contact. And it turns out there's a much better way to do it than what I showed you in the last video. My friend Will Bedford brought it to my attention, and I figured it would be worth uh, publishing an update. So let's get started with the coding. First, of course, we're going to need make perf view, and then we're going to want the UI height, UI height pixel 130. Uh, we're going to need a slider. Let's just name that slider with the min of 0, max of 127. Let's declare a label with width and height of 1. And uh, there's a couple other variables we're going to need. We're going to need one variable to store the ni callback ID of every callback. So we'll declare, let's just call that callback ID. And we're also going to need a constant, which will be UI wait time. And the UI wait time will control how long it takes for the label to reset to whatever text we want it to be. Uh, so this is the time in microseconds. So 1.5 million, I believe that is microseconds is one point is 1.5 seconds. And there we go. So in order to make this work, we're going to need an on UI control for the slider. And inside of here, the first thing you want to do is store the callback ID of this callback to the variable that we declared up here. So a quick explanation of the callback ID. Uh, anytime you play a note in contact, the note has uh, pitch information, velocity information, uh, but there's also a specific ID uh, for that specific event. Uh, so if you play a C a whole bunch of times, every time you play the C, we'll have a new ID. It's the same thing with a callback for a UI control. Every time you move that control a tiny little bit, every time it gets updated, it generates a new callback ID. So yeah, the first thing we need to do is set uh, this variable equal to and I callback ID. That's it. You know what? I forgot to initialize uh, the text on the label up here. So let's do set control par string because the label accepts a string input. We want to modify get uh, UI ID of label. We want to modify control par text, and let's make that text be volume. So back to our UI control, uh, let's say that every time we move the slider, we want the label to update with the current value of the slider. So we can just copy paste this little piece of code, but instead of updating it with volume, we'll just update it with the current value of slider. So let's just compile this real quick. We'll make a new instrument. Uh, script editor, edit, paste that in. There we go. So we have a slider and we have a label and when we move the slider the value updates in there. That's good. Now the next step is to make it so that when we let go of this slider, when we stop moving it, this text resets back to volume. Now you might remember the last video there was a lot of complicated stuff with timers and incrementing things and checking things. Well, here's a much better way to do it. We're just going to wait our UI wait time. So this looks similar to the last video, but this next step is the part where it's different. Now what we need to do is check whether the current callback ID is the same as the callback ID that we previously stored. So we can say if callback ID is equal to an I callback ID, oops, callback, we want to do something, and in this case, we want to set the text back to volume. So we'll just copy this little piece of code here. And there we go, that's it. So if we hit F5 and compile this, paste it in, there's our label saying volume. If we move the slider, it updates with the current value. Uh, yep, that's working good. If we let go, we get a 1.5 second pause and the text sets itself back to volume. 
So yeah, there's a much simpler way of accomplishing exactly the same thing. Um, so if we just talk through a little bit of what's going on here, again, this variable, the ni callback ID, is specific to every single callback for this slider. So that means as soon as I click on this, every single time it moves a, a, a tiny, tiny bit, it generates a whole new callback. And all we're doing when we're checking if this is the same, uh, essentially it's saying, if we have not touched this control for 1.5 seconds, reset it back to volume. Because remember, once we've stored this, uh, there are probably going to be a whole lot of other identical callbacks coming after it. So it ensures that the only callback that will set this back to volume is the very last callback, one that has had at least 1.5 seconds of nothing happening. So there you go, a much simpler way of getting a very nice auto-updating label inside of Contact, so you don't have to have multiple labels for everything, you can just use one for uh, the name of your control as well as the current value of the control. In future videos, I'll be talking about a slightly more advanced concept where you can actually uh, detect whether you click or let go of a slider. Um, and it's a little bit more complicated. There will also be some videos on legato scripting and other interesting things. So if this has been useful, I suggest that you subscribe. You can also check out some of my free libraries that I've made at ivyaudio.com. As always, I hope this video has been somewhat useful, and thanks for watching.